smoke gets in your eyes. They ask me how I knew my true love was true. replied something here inside cannot be denied they said someday you'd find all who love are blind On fire, you must realize smoke gets in your eyes. So I chat them and I gaily laughed to think they could doubt my love. Yet today my love has flown away I am without my love no. Ken, is that a tale of remembrance is the track you're referring to? Tears I cannot hide oh, So I smile and say Lovely flame dies, smoke gets in your eyes. Smoke gets in The platters and smoke gets in your eyes. Right, I'll just get it now and um, I shall play it right now once it uh, uploads onto the playlist and we'll see um, if I can. Okay, it's taking its time. It would be, wouldn't it? Ah, oh, there we go. It's done its thing. Right, I'll play it now. Uh, just a cotton picking minute. No wrong thing. Uh, I'm in the wrong place. Uh, right, I don't have a... Um, Artist for it. Is this one of uh, Pablo's? No. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, I'm listening to the other one. Cheeky it. Right. This is just simply entitled A Tale of Remembrance. Dogs of war, or brothers in arms. Young men from the cities, the valleys, and the farms. Sworn to the crown and the country's peace. Honour, pride and courage, the soldier's creed. The shilling is taken and the deal is struck. This code of honour, this game of luck. Pain's now his friend in so many ways. The soldier's burden for the rest of his days. But why go to war 
a war without end. If not our heroes, then who do we send? Sentenced to hell in a war-torn land, dodging the reaper, hidden in the sand. But this isn't new, it's from centuries past. From bow and arrow, to bullets and gas. But what are the lessons when our heroes return? In a flag-draped coffin, what did we learn? So we begin our journey on neighbouring shores. This one was called the War to End Wars. Trenches were dug and Tommies were slain. The First World War was all done in vain. From the first to the second in a new kind of hell, a bully is now in power and a country has fell. To Europe again they answered the call, young men gathered all standing tall. On land and at sea the battles are fought, inch by inch their liberties bought. And then came the time of the Battle of Britain, defending our skies, our future was written. And then the tyrant had fallen and peace was restored. You never know, this could be the war to end wars. And for a while we thought it was true, as our heroes stayed home with nothing to do. But conflict still raged in far distant lands. Korea, South Africa and then Vietnam. Cyprus and Turkey and God only knows how the hell we still think we are friends and not foes. But then to the Cold War, political chess. A nuclear stalemate between East and the West. The hammer and the sickle would not bend to the Star Spangled Banner with no means to an end. The fear of destruction would not make them see the horrors of fallout that could so easily be. The end of mankind for a political cause? Maybe that would be the war to end wars. But the wait wasn't long before violence returned, because in 69, innocence burned. In the Emerald Isle, the theatre was set, a land full of hatred, fear, the minister said we'd be home in December. How quick they forget, but how long we remember. We arrived as heroes, but the message got lost, as the price we paid just wasn't worth the cost. The bricks and the nails, and the bottles and sticks, with the odd petrol bomb thrown in with a mix. The kids line the streets and shout out abuse. These guns that we have are simply no use. A rebel song sang of green, white and gold, of a deep-rooted hatred of young through to old. But no matter the threat, we must remain true, because we swore our allegiance to the red, white and blue. But what was the reason for this civil war? Was it religion, or politics, or just hate for the law? Whatever the reason, the blind led the blind, with the politicians and the priests all standing behind. But while the war raged within our own land, fate was close by to deal its next hand. The ships and the troops were rallied in panic to go fight war in the South Atlantic. The task force arrived and the job began. To liberate our people from an occupied land. But the altar of freedom came at a cost as once again lives were tragically lost. The desert was the next to become the damned as war broke out in the Holy Land. Reactions were quick and the job was done, but yet again many had died at the point of a gun. And then back to Europe, but this time the East, to Bosnia and Kosovo to ensure there was peace. Still the lessons of history had not been learned as once again the innocent were banished and burned. The villages and roadsides were full of the dead as ethnic cleansing stained the government red. But all our heroes could do was watch in vain as this horror unfolded again and again. Then that was that and peace was restored. Even in Ireland they were talking once more. Could it be that we were now finally finding peace 
At last, all the killing and dying could finally cease. Then all of a sudden, Armageddon came. As the Twin Towers fell, and war broke out again. But this time they faced a new kind of foe, back to Iraq and Afghanistan, our heroes would go. And there in that land they continued to fight, in a terrorist war with no end in sight. IEDs and ambushes, firefights and mines, and yet again we've ignored the danger signs. But they died for our freedom, and our right to live. On land, sea and air, their lives they did give. Those that survive still live with the pain, reliving their nightmares again and again. So as we enter this time of remembrance, lest we forget the pain and the courage, the blood and the sweat. We owe so much, as Churchill once said. So as the last post ends, Bow your heads and remember our dead. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. There you go, a tale of remembrance. Pablo, that is a fantastic piece of writing. Uh, as I'm doing a breakfast show on Sunday morning, I'll play that. Uh, leave it in the library somewhere, Ken, where we can find it. I, I notice you're going to move all Paul's stuff around into the one place. Uh, I'll play that on Sunday morning. But, as needs must, and my stomach tells me I'm hungry, it is time for me to go. And there's no way to top that, except by this piece. Uh, it's a Maori song of farewell. It's Poetaro. And now is the hour. 